So one really nice thing Adonis.js allows us to do is actually extend and provide our own methods onto the query builder. And this is for the database query builder, the model query builder, and the insert query builder. Now the database query builder is going to be explicit whenever you're working with the database module. The model query builder is going to be whenever you're building a query directly off of a model, say for example, a post model. And then the insert query builder is going to be whenever you're working with the insert query builder off of the database module. And all three approaches to extending these with macros and getters is very similar similar for all three. So in this case, we're just going to focus on extending the model query builder. And we're going to start out with just the example covered here in the documentation. And then once we cover this, we'll create our own macro kind of based off of a method provided by Laravel called first or so it will attempt to find the first record for your query builder. If there aren't any records matching your search criteria, then it will execute back your callback function and return back whatever you return from this callback function as the final value. So we're gonna go over those two examples here today. Now, first and foremost, we're gonna go over the get count example here in the documentation. So one reason why this might be very useful is because what it's going to do is actually execute your query, get back the result, specifically grab just the count value, and then return that back as a big integer. And the reason why that's useful is because if you just use count the way that it is used within the normal query builder, you're gonna get back an array and then within that array is going to be a model record and then your count's going to be within the extras property and then it will be within whatever the count was named within there. So we can use this macro to actually just directly get back that count value instead of having to dig in through the extras to actually grab that value. So this is great in instances where you just care about the count and nothing else related to the query. So let's go ahead and add that into our project. So I'm working within my Adonis.js serializations example project. Uh, this is just an extension of the Adonis.js bouncer project that I have up on GitHub. Um, so first and foremost, what we're gonna wanna do is go ahead and create a provider. So let's go ahead and exit out of REPL and run node ace make provider. And let's just call this query builder and we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and jump back into our project here, open up the query builder provider, and we will want to provide all of these extensions within the boot method. And first and foremost, what we're gonna to wanna to do is actually import the model query builder. So we're going to wanna do this directly inside of the boot and not at the top level because it is using an IOC container binding. So let's go ahead and import this by doing const model query builder equals this app container resolve binding, and this should be at Adonis Lucid database. So once we have this imported, we're actually free and clear to go ahead and define our macros and getters as needed. So we can do model query builder dot macro. The first argument is going to be the name. So we could do get count. And then the second argument is going to be that callback function. So let's do async function. And you do want this to be a scoped functions, not an error function, because this is going to be an instance of our actual query builder. So we can do this count to go ahead and execute our count. And then let's go ahead and execute the query builder itself so that we get back the result. So following our previous example from our REPL result is going to be the equivalent of this right here. It's going to be an array with a post record or whatever this query builder is extended off of. So what we'll want to do is in order to return back just the count value, we can do return big in, and then we can reach inside of the result to that first record instance, grab it off of the extras, and it should just be called total since that is what we call the actual count column. Okay, now that we have it properly defined, let's go ahead and inform TypeScript about that. So let's open up our contracts directory. Let's add in a new file. Let's go ahead and just call this ORM ts and we're naming it ORM because we are going to extend the Adonis Lucid ORM. So module at IOC Adonis Lucid ORM. And we are declaring this within the Lucid ORM because that is where the model query builder contract is defined. So we can do interface model query builder contract and then this can take in a couple of type arguments. So model extends lucid model and result equals instance type model. And so this is essentially saying that model is an extension of lucid model, which all of our models within our app directory actually are. And then here we're saying that the result type is going to be an instance of whatever model we're actually building this query off of. So all that we need to do here is define our get count method, and that will essentially extend it onto the model query builder contract. So we can do get count, 
And then what we're doing here is returning back an async function. So this is going to be a promise whenever that function actually executes. And then that function itself returns back a big int. So now we have our get count method properly defined on our models and we can execute this from any model. So let's go ahead and jump back into a rebel session here, load up our models by calling load models and let's await models.post.query to enter the query builder for this. And then we can directly call get count off of here to get the count of all records that we have for our post model. And you'll see that we get back three. And this little n here is a derivative of the big int type. And we can do the same thing with our users. So await user query get count and you'll see there we get 4n so it's working just fine there and we can use that on any model that we have within our application so now that we have that nice and working let's go ahead and work on our first or extension based off of laravel so let's jump back into our application here jump back into our query builder provider so let's do model query builder dot macro and let's call this first or and we're going to have an async function again. We, again, we want this to be scoped, so not an arrow function. And then I'm also going to provide a type argument of t. And then for this function, we will accept a callback function, which we will call or function. And the type for this is going to be a promise that returns back t. And then finally, all that we need to do is const result and await this dot first. So we'll attempt to get back the first record from the query if we can. If there is no record, so if not result, what we want to do then is return back the result of our or function. Otherwise, we can go ahead and just return back the result since we know that we actually have a result to return. So if there is a first record within our query results, we will return that back. Otherwise, we will return back whatever the callback function returns. And you can provide a specific type for that as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and define this to TypeScript. So within our model query builder contract, again, we're going to go ahead and do first or, and then we will decorate this with our T variable and we will default this to undefined if it's not provided. And then we will define the argument for this as our or function, which is the callback function. So it should be of type function. And the result for this is going to be promise our result or T, whatever we define that our or function value is going to be. Okay, cool. So we have that defined AOK. -okay. So let's go ahead and jump back into our REPL session and take a look at this one. So load models, await models.post.query.first or, and then we can provide this back a callback function that returns back, say working. I don't know if REPL supports TypeScript, so we'll just hit enter on that. And you'll see that we get back the first result of our post record. However, if we were to await models.post query dot where ID is some number I know is not in the database dot first or and then provide that callback function and hit enter here you can see that we get back working as that is what is defined as the return value for our callback function so let's go ahead and take a look at this in the code base where we can actually view how we can define a return type so that we have TypeScript support. So I'm just going to go into the post controller here and let's go down to show and I'm just going to do an alternative query for post. So we can do const post2 equals await post.query dot where id is the params dot id dot first or and then we can provide the callback function and we could do our working string here. However, if we take a look at the return type for this, uh, we're gonna get a warning here that it's declared but never used. You can see that we're still getting post or undefined. So we can provide an argument for our first or function here and define this return value for our callback function as a string. And now the type is going to be string or post. Or if you wanna do new post to return back a new post instance, and then we can set this to just post and now if we take a look, we should see that this is explicitly just post. So we can always expect back a post for a post to and TypeScript will know that accordingly. Mm -hmm.